guess my first question to you is the misconception that the public has that their reflux is being treated by medicine. Okay. What, what would you say to the average patient about that? Well, I think you need to understand the disease uh, appropriately. And, and the way most people look at reflux disease is they look at it as a person who has heartburn and that's the disease. Uh, they believe that the disease is controlled and cured if they control and cure the heartburn. And that's not really true. What, what the disease is that it's, it's an abnormality in the barrier between the stomach and the esophagus that, that is norm, in normal people prevent gastric fluid from going up into the esophagus. Right. So if you have heartburn, it means that that barrier is destroyed. And when you take the medicines, the only thing the medicine will do is it will neutralize the acid so that when what refluxes into the esophagus refluxes, you don't feel pain. Right. But the reflux just continues to happen. And I don't think that's a good way of treating disease. And I think if you look at, you know, if, if you look at the, 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 uh, ad, the advertisements in the, during the football games for Nexium, what you get is a person who says, you know, I want to eat a hamburger. And uh, then says, oh, I'm not sure I should eat this hamburger because I'm going to get heartburn. And then the light sort of goes out and he says, well, if I take a Nexium before I eat the hamburger or a Zantac if I eat the hamburger, then I can go and eat the hamburger. But what that does is it prevents you from getting the pain, but the reflux get, gets worse and potentially your barrier gets worse. Right. Um, so what's your overall impression of PPIs? Well, uh, I'm not a fan of PPIs. I mean, it's sort of like, for me, it's sort of like taking a painkiller when you get a knee injury. And the painkiller permits you to run, but as you run on an injured knee, it's it's not going to, it's just going to get worse. So PPIs are like that, and I, you know, I think that I think they're creating a situation where, uh, where the the disease gets worse progressively. You get complications like Barrett's esophagus. You increase the rate of cancer, and and so I'm not saying that the PPIs directly cause cancer, but I do believe that PPIs contribute to, to Barrett's esophagus. And I think that there is enough evidence to say that. And I think if that happens, you're just going from a person who is in pain and has no risk of getting cancer to a person who might or might not be in pain, but now has a risk of getting cancer. And I can't believe that the second is better than the first. Oh, definitely not. Um, in that same realm, what do, what do you feel the role of reflux surgery, whether it's Nissen fund duplication or the Lynx device or, or some of the other partial fund duplications that we do, what do you think the role of that in controlling not only reflux but preventing cancer and preventing Barrett's esophagus? Right, so when you look at the disease, it seems like the disease is caused by a defective barrier. Or a, or a sphincter. And until you do something about that, the disease is only going to get worse. So there is a lot of evidence that suggests that if you just treat like you're treating today with any drug that is available out there, that five years from now, you'll have a greater likelihood of being more seriously damaged by your reflux. The only for me, the cure of the disease is the cure of, of what causes the disease, which is the defective sphincter. And there are no perfect ways, maybe, of, 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 uh, of correcting that damaged sphincter once it's damaged. But there are many methods of, of creating, a, of augmenting that barrier uh, surgically or by placing a lynx or by doing a Nissan fund replication or, or doing a partial front replication. Uh, and what exactly is appropriate for different people depends on the status of your sphincter, and that needs a certain amount of investigation. But once you do that, uh, I, I know people who've completely stopped their reflux. And once you completely stop your reflux, if the, if the procedure is done properly, then you're no longer at risk, you no longer have symptoms. You might have a few complications, rarely, like a little flatulence or a little bloating, 
But in terms of curing a disease, that to me is not that much of a, a, a side effect that, that represents a serious barrier towards getting that done. But that's clearly a matter of choice for the patient. And as long as you understand the, the, the risk, the complications, and what you're trying to do, you're trying to cure a disease, trying to control your symptoms, you're, you're trying to prevent the progression of your disease by, by doing this, this surgery, I, I mean, I, I personally would, would choose the surgery if I had reflux. Fortunately, I've never had reflux in my life, so I've never had to make, make the choice. But, but I think from a logical standpoint, that's, that's the way I would.